Last year, I came across Sasha Abramsky's book, The House of 20,000 Books, which was for me, without question, one of the best books of the year. The book describes the life of Himan Abramsky, a Jewish immigrant originally from Minsk, Belarus, who came to England via Israel in 1939 on the eve of World War II, and eventually settled in London, spending the rest of his life there. This is a fascinating book about an extremely interesting period in European history, and the period is described through the life and the books of Himan Abramsky. And please remember to hit the subscribe and like buttons to help the channel and turn notifications on to be notified when new content comes online. So the house of 20,000 books. I bought this book mainly because of the title. I love reading books about books, about collections and libraries. And this is how I stumbled upon this one. So it was pretty much by accident. I have not heard about it before. And I have to say that I absolutely loved the book. It was about so much more than just books. In fact, it seemed that it used books as an excuse to talk about the life of an extraordinary person, and through that, an entire period of European intellectual history, about the complex interaction between Russian, Jewish, British, and other intellectuals. Even though he escaped from the Soviet Union with his family, Himan Abramsky initially was a leading member of the British Communist Party. But with time, he changed his political views and became extremely critical about the USSR and its ideology. The 20,000 books in the title refer to the private collection of Himan Abramsky, amassed in the course of his very long life. He primarily collected socialist and communist literature, and especially books, manuscripts, and memorabilia connected with Karl Marx. The collection included some priceless editions and pieces of correspondence written between leading figures of the socialist movement, including Marx and Lenin. Books were clearly a major obsession of he mans life. Every bit of his house was filled with books, from the entry hall and the living room all the way up to his bedroom, where he kept his most prized treasures. And he knew his books very well. He was extremely familiar, not only with their content, but also with their background history, telling his visitors a wealth of little-known stories and anecdotes associated with a particular book. And of course, some of the editions and manuscripts he possessed had their own special history, and he could talk at length about any of them with his visitors. After Heman's death, most of his enormous library was sold, and now he's kept in public collections, which is where it undoubtedly belongs. I was captivated with how much care and love he treated his books. He was obviously preoccupied with the desire to document the early history of the socialist movement, and so rare editions related to this subject were his most prized gems. It was also fascinating to read how his love of books and intellectual discussion drew other collectors into his orbit, and how their house gradually became like a salon, often with lots of people engaged in heated debates. Over the course of his long life, Heman's collection continued to grow. It was assembled not so much with money as through applying knowledge and connoisseurship and, most importantly, time and quite a bit of foresight. All in all, this is a wonderful book. I personally not only enjoyed it tremendously, but also learned a lot from it about things that were usually less in the focus of my own attention. For example, how central London and Britain were for the socialist movement. This is something I had not really known, even though I grew up in socialist countries, and there we had to learn quite a bit about the history of socialism, but London somehow never came up. It was wonderful to read about the background of some of these movements from the point of view of intellectuals who had spent their life beyond the Iron Curtain, which from our point of view was the other side. Of course, this was largely due to my own ignorance. I have had plenty of opportunities to learn about 20th century history, including the history of the socialist movement. But having been force-fed a kind of distorted version of this since my childhood, I simply was never interested in this. And so this book showed me a new and exciting side of this movement. It allowed me to look at it from an entirely different perspective, and it did it in an engaging way. So, I warmly recommend the book to everyone. It's a wonderful read, and it's full of interesting information and history. If you have read it, I would be really interested in your take on it. 
Thank you for watching and see you next time.